I'm over to John. He will be doing the next presentation. Um, will be showing us uh, a few things about practical IoT applications around um, power, around power measure. And please stand by while we are changing the scene. <laughs> It's probably <laughs> yeah, I'll be sure. Okay, I think we're set. Go. Floor is open. Absolutely. I don't know where this comes from. Okay. As long as you're speaking up, you don't really need it. Just just pull, pull in there. If you prefer, you can have it. Yeah, I think uh, I think my voice is right. Sorry, I can't. Why? <laughs> Uh, yeah, hello. Um, I'm probably most of people probably already know me. Most of people might also notice that usually I don't sound like a chain smoker, but today I sound like this. Um, I'm going to try to the presentation. If my voice shuts down halfway through, give me a minute and I'll try to reboot it. Um, yeah, let's get started. So, is there an clicky presenter thing? Um, or should, should, should I just do a camera thing? But yeah, it's been great. So um, just to clarify prompt, this is about power measurement, but this is not about microcontroller power measurements. This is about power measurements from my apartment. So kilowatts instead of milliwatts. Um, yeah, when we moved into our uh, current apartment, our uh, electric meter cabinet that looks like this, um, it has an, well, I wouldn't call it a free war, but Probably got installed when uh, the rock was built. It has nice mechanical meters and it has this nice spinning disk that tells you every kilowatt consumed. Um, beginning of this year, we got a letter in the box telling us they were going to upgrade this to um, this unit. Looks a lot more modern. This one is what they call smart. And <laughs> um, these days are going to look like this. And what you can see there, down there, down there, that's the meter itself. What we got up there is the circuit breakers. There's some notification to the call if it shuts down. And I filled in some USB for two of my own. And this is essentially what I built. And this is also what my talk is going to build. This is the agenda, sort of. And we have the electricity meter. It has this so-called V1 port. I'll talk more about that in a bit. That's the ESP32 that you notice. And um, ESP32s have Wi Fi, so it connects to a server. There's a GoDaddy and a Postgres database and a Profana dashboard. Then I'll talk a bit about all of those. I won't be talking about the utilities connection and the circuit breaker, but that's how I scope this point. So why do I want this? Um, yeah, I want insights in my electricity consumption. I think, you know, it's nice to have those. It looks green, you know, if you can tell people, you know, I'm using less power during the nights compared to using during the days. Uh, but mostly, you know, this whole thing sounds fun and it sounds like something I could build in a weekend or so. You know, try to sniff things out. So this electricity meter uh, that we got, it's uh, what they call um, a DSMR. It has a DSMR P1 port. Um, if you open any of the related specifications, you see this diagram they provided. They always give this diagram, and you can immediately see why it's called a P1 port. That's because there's a P0 port, a P2, a P3, and a P4 port, and this one is the P1 port. The P0 port is for the local technician, the P2 is for something else, and you know, um, that's it. The interesting thing, though, is that um, you know, this is all specification based. It's 
uh, from Netbeheer Nederland. Um, that's a group of grid uh, operators from the Netherlands uh, doing some combined effort to get this working. That's very nice. It's based on IEC 62056. You don't have to remember that number. Just the film that whenever there's an IEC number in this particular case or in the slide here, it's always this number. You know, I'm not going to bore you to make sense those numbers. But it has this, you know, this P1 port. And the cool thing is this P1 port, it's there specifically for consumers to read out. You know, that setup I showed you in the, in the, the new picture I showed you in the beginning, that's not any hacking done on the electric. Meter. I don't didn't have to screw open anything, I just had to plug it in and it worked. So I wouldn't call this hacking. You know, I didn't do anything illegal there. If I would start working with the other ports, then it would be questionable. Okay, so this IC number, this whole bit, these is based on this IC number, then you start to dig down into a sort of hole of specification. It's a rabbit hole. It's really like these is at the bottom. And you kind of work your way up, and here there's, you know, this is bottom step approach, but I had to go from top down, and it starts with DLMS, which is the original industry specification for reading out. Then you have the IEC, which is the international electrical something. Uh, for smart meters, it's essentially DLMS, but with an IEC stamp on it. Then you get the EN, which is the European Union standards. It's the same specification, but from the European Union. Then there's the DIN and the NEN, which are the German and the Dutch specification for the same thing. You can buy those, they cost around 100, uh, 400 euro per chapter. It's not fun. These are, luckily, these are the bits that you need are open. And that's good, that's nice. But those others are just, you know, good luck getting those. Um, because ISE is in 2056, you know, the same number. It's a nice standard. 24 documents. Um, so one of those costs between 100 to 400 euro just to read it. Um, good luck. I didn't buy them. Um, the interesting part, so for us, and that's also these mark tells you that you know what's interesting in the specification is the dash six dash one, you know, some chapter uh, that defines the object identifications. This is what you receive from your smart meter, and that's the number in front, the 1-0 column 1.8.1, that's an identifier. Um, and that maps to a property. In this case, it's a uh, kilowatt hours consumed uh, by your home. And um, you see the register value. The register value here is not exactly part of the spec, but included for completeness. Uh, that includes a unit. And that's already, you know, that's quite nice. I would say that makes it easy to follow, easy to read. So that's one part of the spec. The other one is um, the dash 21 chapter, you know, please don't remember these numbers. Um, this is a spec that tells you for direct local exchange of meter data. Um, read that as serial over blah um, things. Could be wires, could be LEDs, could be anything. And this defines multiple protocols, you know, how to transmit data over serial connection, which part rates. And what these are mark big is essentially protocol mode D, what they call, and that's the mode where you push a button and you receive data. It's very simple. It's very nice for these kind of uh, things, I would say. But essentially, it's you work over wires, uh, not you know something, not not something Riot has any difficulty with, like say. <laughs> um, but that brings us back to these mark the specification I'm trying to implement. Uh, because these two I just mentioned, those are the main ones that are implemented uh, or uh, used by ESMR. Um, ESMR is in development for quite a time now. Well, their version 5 now that's been out since 2016, if I have to believe them. Uh, that added error checking, uh, increased the message baud rate, one of the versions, and uh, the decrease the measurement it fall from 10 to 1 seconds. That's all very nice. You know, the error checking is quite nice because actually you leave that over a serial connection. I think most of the experience it once or twice that your your terminal to decide to make bytes disappear. Um, so that's yeah. Um, a missing zero in the number of kilowatt hours is quite essential. 
And physically, like I also already mentioned it, you can just plug a cable into your electricity meter. That's very convenient. It's an RJ12 connection. It's nothing more. It has a five full power supply line. It has this data request line that access the button um, from the protocol mode. You know, round wires, a data wire, more ground. And very nice, the five volt provided is not included in your uh, power meter, your electricity meter. That's free power provided to you by the, power, the company. It's not unlimited power, it's just a bit of free power, but it's efficient to power these kind of plug in devices. And this is what you get, you know, this is the kind of data you get from a meter, you know, you plug in a cable, you pull down that data request line and it starts to spit out these things once a second. And this is again, lot of numbers, but at some point you just recognize by the kilowatt hours that the first kilowatt hour line is like what I consumed at tariff one, then the one consumed at tariff two, that's like during the days, during the nights, I'm not sure if all countries have this separation between day and night power, but yeah. Um, the other ones is why they delivered back. I don't have any solar panels, so I don't know where that 43 uh, watt hours came from. Um, sure. Uh, I think this is uh, the 416 kilowatts is probably the current uh, power consumption at that time when I took this measurement. The last one is an error bar, which I have no clue how to decode it. Don't ask me what, but it's something on when you lost power and you probably need one of those uh, expensive chapters to read that out. And this is the rest of the bit. There's more numbers there. There's the, uh, the voltage of the line, the number of amps in all number of amps that you draw. That's surprisingly useless. Um, yeah, sorry, that's one or two or three or four. And, and the almost last one, the last one is the, the TRC and the one above is like a timestamp and the gas meter usage that got plugged in via one of the other ports. And that gives me, once per 15 minutes, gives me my gas usage yeah. um, with a timestamp. That, that one thing is a timestamp. You might, it's 2023 something something. And then whether it's daytime or nighttime, it's very interesting <laughs> format. Don't consider this one if you ever write. Okay, but people implement this. Like, you know, it didn't look that difficult. People, there's multiple implementations. If you look around, you know, if you do a search for DSMR, you see like there's a home assistant implementation. If you want a smart home, there's a best mode implementation. If you want more, there's GitHub implementation, you know, and almost like nearly at the bottom, there's the actual specification. So, you know, there's quite a few people implementing this. <laughs> um, so it's not that hard, you know, I, it is also, I gave the shot with right integration. I thought, let's make a proper implementation, you know, convert the data. The, the whole goal was here to convert this data I get from the smart meter, uh, part of this and feed it periodically in some kind of go app both requests to my server. And decided, you know, let's have first the DSMR module that does the actual UR handling and read the serial data and have something proper IEC parsing thing that does the, the whole, this, this number, numerical format and the register. And they need a bit of glue, um, convert the values into C4 encoded CNML because I think it's nice to use open standards for this. Um, and probably, you know, I need a somewhere to go app to actually format the thread. So that was the idea. Um, then you get to implementing and then you notice that if you want to have like full DSMR or IEC spec, then things become nasty because this goes some ideas that they're called, you know, these three are all valid. That's, that's not nice. That's from an embedded perspective, you know, having all these edge cases, that's not nice. And registers, you know, they have a kilowatt hour location behind them. That might be the case. So it might just have immediately been an percent or an enclosure uh, parenthesis and done. So that increases the number of edge cases and the parser wrote, you know, I'm not proud of it, but it does the job. 
And that means that my right integration from that idea became something like the SMR handling that's the full telegram because you get that data spit at you um, at 11, 5, 200 something bound rate that's fast enough that you can't just parse it uh, byte by byte anymore. You have to buffer the whole thing and then start parsing it. So, you know, suddenly you need a kilobyte of buffers. Um, that was disappointing. Uh, but anyway, you know, I could parse the thing, have some glue. Um, in the end, I decided, you know, I just buffer the metrics I get from uh, my electricity meters for the latest value. And periodically, uh, you know, sometimes some kind of C time periodic, uh, just push a post request to the server. And it works, you know, it works fine. It's not really an issue, you know, you get your, your values at the server and that, that works. It's not pretty, but as I mentioned before, it was a public project, you know, so I think it's fine. Uh, so that brings us, did I skip a slide there? No. Okay, that brings us to the server side. You know, assume we push those values to the server. Uh, on the server side, I wrote, well, it's not a quick Go application, but it's a Go application. It's, um, I started over-engineering this. Um, it's a co -op registry. It does CNML parsing. There's a database interface. Uh, um, it's more designed for, I would say, generic sensor uh, network thing uh, than just, you know, receive values and push them into a database. And that made it a bit of over-engineering. But, you know, I'm still, you know, quite happy with it. So it does the thing and uh, receives the values, pushes them into a Postgres database. Postgres is usually not nice for time series, but there's this nice time field DB um, extension that makes it suitable for time series. But you can have, if you could do anything, you know, there's InfluxDB and others for a more proper time series if you want to store metrics in a different format. Um, but I used Postgres for this. You know, I, I, I mentioned I have engineered this, so I have a realm if you have different regions of tender nodes, you know, I also want to make it my mom's home. Uh, I could add a realm. Um, a realm might have multiple nodes, uh, each representing a single device that had multiple theories. Um, so that could be power consumption and, uh, well, everything. Uh, labels associated with those uh, metrics so that they have a name and, and a unit attached to it. And there's a table for the measurements themselves, uh, which is one huge table with all the measurements and just foreign keys into which series those um, specific values represent. And you might think, you know, that you have comments on this, but I would give my, my prime argument here is this works. And, you know, feel free to optimize, but for me, this works. Um, and I can hook this into Grafana. Grafana is this nice uh, daemon that provides dashboards, um, provides a web interface where you can just click to get a dashboard, um, also using it for the Riot CI and things, and we can drag and drop time series things, and it's very convenient as long as you put in some time and effort to really, um, yeah, make a dashboard. And I'm not sure if it's visible out there in the back, but what you can see is that here I have a time series that represents the power usage. I have the line voltage there, the current flow. The current flow is, you can see it goes step up, step down. That's because of that, you know, you get only a whole number of amps uh, from the device back. So it's, uh, not very granular, and my gas usage, and probably here you can see a shower, something cooking, I think, and not a shower. There's a shower because that's the next day, of course. More cooking, a lot more cooking, I think, and more showering. <laughs> uh, yeah, so that's also that's what you get if you start to plot things. You suddenly see your own behavior back in your own graphs. And um, yeah, that brings me back to the results. Uh, the first result, and I can show you that, is that the 230 volts you get out of your wall sockets is not 230 volts. That swings. This, this is two days, but you can also already see it swinging up and down a bit between 230 and 235. And I saw it swing up and down between 226 and 240 volts. And that's, that's you know, completely normal. That's what your power grid, you know, they, 
this is what they guarantee somewhere between this and that. Um, my power consumption itself, <laughs> it, um, yeah, what you can see here is uh, there's there's some background noise that's probably a refrigerator or something. Then it goes up during the days. So that's probably computers or something that I turn on during the morning and turn up again during the night. And all those spikes, that's uh, coffee, water, boiling for tea, uh, maybe a dishwasher or laundry machine. But yeah, you can actually see those spikes. You can exactly see, you know, pinpoint, you know, then I went for tea, then I went for coffee. Um, so yeah, um, I would say this data, it's, it's an aggregate, but it's still quite uh, privacy sensitive, I would call it. Um, so those are the peaks. It's uh, different appliances that you turn on. It just need most of the time it's just heating up water and it takes a lot of energy that you see the spike from. Um, the gas usage in my apartment, we're only using it for heating up water and the stove. So no um, central heating. Central heating is not using any gas. Um, and you can exactly see the spikes, you know, you can see by uh, how wide or how large the spikes are, exactly which activity we're doing. And it's also, you know, kind of scary why I would not want my electricity um, provider read out the meter themselves. So um, if I ever have to spend another weekend on this, um, I have a few things I would like to work on. Uh, so at this point, data rate is once per second that you receive this full telegram. Uh, that greatly exceeds what I saw in the database. Database is only, I think, every five minutes or maybe every minute. And um, every second is, is a bit too much for me. But I'm thinking, considering like storing the high and the low of the uh, time frames and maybe some average, because currently it's just the law of value of the uh, time period. The other one interesting is that some kind of payload loop is in core capabilities. Yeah. Because I mentioned before, you have three power there. Um, make it an, an intermediate router or some kind of multi hop mesh network. You know, if it's plugged in anyway, you know, sounds fine. Anyway, uh, yeah, so what I would say is these kind of things, if you try your best, it could be done in a weekend. Um, don't start off with engineering things like I did, you know, what components here are good. Generic enough for any larger sensor network, probably can support a few hundred nodes. Uh, that's very nice, but at this point, it's just a single electricity meter. Uh, so that's my setup. Um, thank you for your time. If there's any questions, you know, be happy to answer them. Um, so why didn't I write my web server in Rust? Um, mostly because at that time I was able to program in Go and was not able to program in Rust. And of course, you can say, you know, use this as a learning experience to learn writing Rust. I know that's the idea, but um, yeah, in my opinion, Go is uh, my go-to if I want to have something where I would, uh, like previous year, I would take Python for quick scripting, and now that's Go. Uh, so in this case, I just wanted some easy server-side application to be done with it. So that's why I went with Go. That's not a complex answer here. And the um, more serious question would be regarding the average. Uh, could you also infer this from the wattage you uh, set up with the mobility method as well to get a more accurate result, maybe? Uh, um, so, probably yes. I've been trying to get that. So far, the cumulative kilowatt hours have been sufficient to derive some kind of uh, power consumption and the answers needs, but. Most of the time, I'm just considering power consumption, like the, the, the one that's used.
so um but again like this 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 one thing uh is this is another it's two legs for the leg which may want to would like to reproduce your thing uh somehow like uh is is there a, 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 is it is it is in other countries uh the idea uh, is 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 some of the code that you hear share some of the code to the um so um last part first um i have a pull request for the uh, iec blah number uh parsing that, that submitted the smart part i don't think i have that submitted and the go application is um i think closed source because i never pushed it somewhere um I would say I can push it to, to public repositories, like there, there's no blocker there. Um, whether this P1 port is available to other countries, I know Belgium has them, I think it's of Sweden also has them, and I know that German, modern German power meters, um, I'm not sure how rare those are, uh, seem to have an um, a more pure IEC uh, implementation of the specification, implementing also protocol mode, something. Um, I thought that was an implementation of infrared LEDs uh, often used by um, some electricity meters. So that is a, uh, if you're in Belgium or Sweden, Sweden, if I remember correctly, it's easy. Um, if you're in Germany, maybe. Sorry, the question. It's an answer to uh, uh, merely um, <laughs> um, volt ampere is not the same as kilowatt hours used uh, in AC since there's the correlation. Probably the uh, most powerful unit are the uh, uh, core lines that they are uh, ohms. Uh, ohms. Uh, uh, devices like uh, heaters, but uh, every reactive we divide up in that yes. heater would be would not be uh, feasible to back up related. Any more comments, Patrick? Seeing none, uh, thanks a lot.